It's that time of year again. The decorations are up, the shopping rush has begun, and most importantly, the holiday pops is back at Symphony Hall. And this about sums up my feelings. He laughed, by the way. That's the Tanglewood Festival Chorus accompanying the Pops yesterday for opening night. This year's lineup features old favorites along with a few new programs, including the Holiday Pops' first ever sensory-friendly concert. I'm joined now by the guy with the baton for all these performances, Boston Pops conductor Keith Lockhart. Keith, it's great to see you. Hey, Jim. Always a pleasure. So 44 or 45 performances in three weeks. What are you taking to stay awake? A lot of five-hour energy drink, you know. <laughs> do you, by the way? I don't know how you do this. It's like two a day. It is, you know, and I was just remarking, this is my 25th straight year doing this, and it used to be a little easier. Now, uh, by the, for the, in the three performance days in particular, you get to the third one, and it, it, it's fumes. You're running out. By the fumes. way, I saw the photograph that your family put in the milk cart, and you look fabulous. In the milk. <laughs> you know, you look so, almost just like you, by the way. No, Did this no. thing used to be called Christmas at the at Pops before it was the Pops? before my time. It switched in the 80s, I think. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's funny. We still have that discussion because... Uh, yes, we are trying to be inclusive, and we're, we're mm. trying to realize that, you know, and many people join us who are not specifically celebrating Christmas. And this year is a wonderful season because Hanukkah and Christmas happen to fall right. right on top of each other, so there's a nice conflux of celebration. But at the end of the day, the vast majority of the music and the people we're playing the music for are celebrating Christmas in one way or the other. You know, I said this to you on the radio yesterday. I should be... Christmas holiday at the Pops' worst nightmare. I hate sing-alongs. <laughs> I hate that whole communal kind of thing. Every single year I've been there, oh, I have like... It's the Grinch. It's, but <laughs> I, no, but I am the Grinch, and then I check it at the door. It is so much fun. It is so magical. It is so... I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Everybody has that reaction, do they not? Kids, oldsters, everybody in between. I think that's the, the biggest honor to us is that people... You're right. Pretty much universally, it's become for so many people... They say, well, we, I can't imagine spending the holidays with my family without the Boston Pops. In, in some ways, in a strange way, it's almost become some people's church. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people's uh, people who are not regular attendees, it's become their spiritual connection to the holiday as well. And, uh, no, it's an honor to be in that position. And that's one of the things, by the way, that gets you up off the couch and put you in for the third performance. And, and we discuss this all the time, every time we're together in the last couple of years. When the world outside is like it is, the world inside with the Pops is even more appealing, is it not? Well, you know, it's it's funny because having been here enough, it's it's hard to avoid repeating yourself. And every year I say something like, well, you know, and we really need it this year. <laughs> and then we get to a year like this, <laughs> when I can't imagine more people just having a high level of anxiety and stress about the present and the future. You know, it's a short interview. Next time you bump into Keith Lockhart, ask him about his one meeting with Donald Trump. Let's move <laughs> on. So uh, give us the highlights. What do people get? Well, um, usually the program is in some way defined by the big piece we do on the program. You know, you've heard before our version of A Christmas Carol, the Dickens, uh, our, the original Christmas story, uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This year, we have a beautiful uh, Pops-specific version of The Polar Express, one the classic, books uh, of yeah, one, a real modern holiday classic, with the words of uh, Chris Van Ellisberg's book and the incredible luminous illustrations, mm -hmm. uh, accompanied by the music that's from the film from 2005. It really works. It's it's about childhood. It's about belief. And it started me thinking that this program would be a little bit about how we as adults look at the holidays through the lens of kids, of childhood. I love that. that, that that's really great. And by the way, when the show's at the BSO, and I'll explain what I mean by that, it's great. It's cabaret-style tables. You can order drinks and food. And, and people do. It's a good <laughs> yes, people really, it's And by party. the way, what I meant by that is you also do shows around New England with our common friend Lisa Graham and the Metropolitan Chorale. We do. They're great singers. Where do you go? Where, where's left to go? Well, this year, we started off in uh, Providence and Schenectady. Uh, we're in uh, Worcester at the, this weekend, and then the next weekend, we are in stores at UConn, and all the way down to New Jersey Performing Arts Center in Newark, and uh, we finish up with Manchester and Lowell. Love that. Explain the sensory-friendly concert thing. It's not the first uh, sensory-friendly concert you've done, but the first for the Holiday at the Pops. The first one of, uh, in the entire BSO was a concert we did for a kids' matinee, a part of the spring pop season, and I didn't know much about it. I've been lucky enough to not have to know much about it, but uh, the idea is that these are concerts that in, which welcome uh, kids on the autism spectrum, kids with various sensory receptive disorders that make it very difficult for them to whatever, sit still, be quiet, sure. any of those
those things you're expected to do in a normal concert. We look at all the parameters of our concert, the lighting. We sell fewer tickets so there's more space between people, so if people need to get up. But the biggest thing is it's the lack of judgment. It's that everybody there is in the same That's boat. Great. And people were so, the parents were in tears. They just said, we can never go anywhere as a family because everybody's always wishing we weren't there. I, yeah. It's beautiful. I think it's great. Before you go, the question on everybody's lips, I know, is the exact same question. Of the hundreds of people, hundreds, some famous, some not, who've recited the night before Christmas and all the years you've been doing this, where would you rank me and Marjorie Egan in that right hierarchy? Right near the top. Right, right near the top? Right near the how, top. How near the top? You know, it's it's. Pro I've done it a thousand times, yeah, okay. so I How would say it? between nine fifty and a thousand. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas, happy <laughs> holiday! Likewise. Can't wait to come this year. <laughs> Love every minute of it, Keith Lockhart. The holiday pops run through Christmas Eve. Do not miss it. Plus a special finale performance on New Year's Eve. For more information, head to bso.org.